So let's say that you've got a slightly older vehicle or perhaps a vehicle that did not come with a high powered AC outlet from the factory. You know what I'm talking about where you can plug in a household 120 volt you know, device or appliance. You know, most modern cars have those. Right now I'm driving my Jeep Wrangler JK. Essentially the JK series was produced from about 2007 to 2018. It did have a minor refresh on the interior around 2011. And in that refresh, I got a 120 volt outlet but it's only 150 watts. So that's great if I wanna charge you know, a, a laptop maybe or something really small, but it's not gonna work if I wanna plug in a, a vacuum, right? Or some other high powered appliance. I mean, a lot of modern vehicles, especially the ones with hybrid powertrains, they have these massive 120 volt AC power systems incorporated into the vehicles where you can get north of 2.4 kilowatts of AC power directly built into the, the vehicle. You know, you've got cars like the, the Ford trucks with the power boost system that provides 2.4 kilowatts of, of energy. Of course, you've got Toyota with the 2.4 liter turbocharged iForce Max. Same thing, 2.4 kilowatts of AC power, but yet those new vehicles, those modern vehicles are very expensive. I mean, most of them are gonna start north of 50 grand and go all the way up to, you know, 100 grand or more. So how can you get that modern AC power system in your existing vehicles, such as my Jeep Wrangler JK right here? Well, in today's video, I'm going to share a solution that solves exactly that problem. And it all revolves around Blue Eddy's Charger One, which is basically an alternator charger that takes your car's engine and basically turns it into a more powerful charger, which in turn can support charging a Bluetti power station. Not only that, but basically any compatible power station or lithium-based battery on the, the market. That's right, you're not just limited to Blue Eddy power stations or Blue Eddy battery systems, you can essentially charge any lithium based product on the market. And so you're not limited to just the Blue Eddy ecosphere, which I think is a major selling point for the Charger One device. So in today's video, I'm going to answer three questions. The first is what exactly is the, the Charger One? You know, what does it do? Second, what does the install look like? Is it DIY, something you can do yourself? And then third, how does it actually perform? How does the Charger One actually perform in a real world environment? Okay, so first question, what is the Blue Eddy Charger One? And basically it's it's like a, a DC to DC supercharger, more or less. It you know takes your your engine's power, your engine's alternator, it harnesses all that power to deliver up to, get this guys, 560 watts of charging power and just for reference if i was to plug in this power station to a, a standard you know 12 volt carport just like this one here typically i'm going to be getting about 50 to 60 watts maybe up to 100 under ideal circumstances and so the the charger one is a game changer because it basically cuts the time to recharge a power station you know, like this one here, this is the AC70. This would take maybe, you know, six to eight hours if I was to plug it in right here to the, the standard 12 volt port. But with the Blue Eddy Charger One, it's going to charge from zero to full, get this, in under two hours. And again, like I said, you're not limited to charging just Blue Eddy power stations. I really think Blue Eddy was smart in making the Charger One because essentially it's going to be compatible with pretty much any lithium based battery or lithium based power station. You know, even a, a lithium battery, if you've got one on your RV, you could use the Charger One to charge that up. And so I think that's really what makes it a, a game changer, not just the fact that you can go up to 560 watts with the, the Charger One, but the fact that it's really universal, essentially. And if you couple it with a power station, like the AC70 here, you're essentially getting a, a more powerful and a more modern power system, an electrical system, 
in your your vehicle essentially i mean the ac70 right here it's going to drive a maximum of a thousand watts right but you could also step up to the blue eddy ac 200 l and that has a maximum output of 2400 watts just like you're going to find with you know ford's power boost setup or the the toyota hybrid 2.4 liter turbocharged so you're essentially getting that same 2400 watts that those brand new cars have and not only that but you can remove the power station from your vehicle and then use it in other locations you know other scenarios so it's completely portable it's also very affordable blue eddy runs promotions and sales frequently you can actually bundle the the charger one with a, a power station and use one of their promo codes and basically get the charger one for practically nothing in a bundle like that so it's really a game changer in my opinion because you can basically modernize your vehicle's power system and essentially give it very similar capabilities compared to some of the newer hybrid vehicles at least in terms of the the electrical system itself of course not the engine or powertrain okay so that's what the blue eddy charger one is and does second let me answer the question what does the install look like for the blue eddy charger one is it something diy that you can do yourself and guys full disclaimer here do your own research make sure you read the instructions provided from blue eddy you know every install is going to be different based on your vehicle right here of course i've got my 2018 jeep wrangler jk this was the very last of the the jk's and so every car is going to be a little bit different on the install but bluetti does give you all the main components you need and i'll just go over real quickly what that install looks like and so basically you're going to need to access your vehicle's starting battery and so in the jeep it's super easy to get to it's right here in the engine bay the compartment here and basically you're going to run some very nice and thick beefy 12 volt cables from your battery all the way to where you put the actual charger one station and so they give you that cable it's a little over 16 feet which i think is going to be plenty for most vehicles and so you can see here this is the cable right here this other one is for the the winch but basically i had to run the the positive and the the negative right here all the way kind of fishing it through the the engine compartment and then for me on the jeep here i just followed the the frame there was another kind of a, a bundle of wires that was already in loom from the the factory and so i just followed that same bundle went right up against the frame all the way past the the fuel tank is kind of right there in the middle and then i decided to hop up and penetrate the rear kind of right next to this abs line going up into the the rear trunk area of the hatch and i'll show you some some b-roll so you can see where exactly i i drilled a hole for those wires but like i said that's going to vary for your specific vehicle and so really for me i just spent a good probably 20 to 30 minutes you know just looking at all the different options and ways i could have run that you know is it easier to go inside the vehicle you know through the floorboards and through some of the trim pieces or is it easier to go outside the vehicle right so just you know spend some time looking under your vehicle figure out what the best path is and then come up with a game plan so you can make everything nice and neat and clean now as far as determining the actual location for the blue eddy charger one you know i knew i wanted it somewhere in this back cargo space right here and so i weighed a lot of different options and it might look a little odd right here because you can see it's kind of slanted and at a slight angle and that's because it's mounted on the the wheel well itself which is you know kind of rounded but I considered a lot of different options, including putting the, the Charger One more in the vertical position, kind of right up here against the other side of the wheel well. And probably that would look better visually, but then it's almost in the way. You know, it'd be in the way if I'm sliding things in and out and things could get caught on it. And so really up here above the wheel well, it's kind of dead space anyway. And so I thought really it's out of the way better. I don't have to worry about, you know, things in this cargo space rubbing up against it or, you know, keeping it from cooling properly. And so that's why I settled on this location right up here. And you can see that I did just ever so slightly bend these mounting brackets that are attached to the charger one so that it could kind of conform to the the roundness of the wheel well right here but i mean it is rock solid 
It's not going anywhere. I had plenty of cable. I kind of just had all the excess, the surplus cable tucked away behind the, the carpet. And I mean, if you're installing this in a, a Jeep, everything is super easy to remove. I mean, all this carpet right here, you just peel it right back and you can get access to everything there. So super easy. And then I'll just mention one thing that really impressed me is that Blue Eddy actually gives you a 12 volt inline circuit breaker with the install kit, which really impressed me because a lot of manufacturers would just give you a cheap you know, inline fuse. And then if the fuse goes out, you gotta have another fuse to fix it. So I really appreciate that. I actually tucked the circuit breaker back here. You can see it, it's all the way right here, tucked behind the, the carpet. You know, I wanted it out of the way. But yet, if I ever need to reset it, I can just peel back this carpet and get access to it. But I really appreciate that Blue Eddy provided that circuit breaker as part of the install kit. I think that's a really thoughtful detail. And then as far as the output coming off of the Charger 1, you can see it's just basic positive and negative terminals right there. They do supply that cable for you. And I just went behind the roll cage and then check this out. You can see the connectors there. It's just the same connectors that you would use for solar panels. And basically it just connects directly to the, the power station there. And that's how it's gonna get that DC power to to charge so I really like that they provide all the cables that you need and it was just really simple to get the the install down I mean I think really the planning of the install is what takes so long you know just figuring out all the different options the ways you could run and you know route the cables and just settling on what's the best you know, practical application for your specific vehicle. Okay, so those are the install details. Next, let me answer the third and final question. And that is how does this setup actually perform in a real world situation? And like I mentioned, the Blue Eddy Charger 1 is compatible with virtually all lithium based power stations, lithium based batteries on the market. So I really like that a lot. But today, just for demonstration purposes, I've got it connected to the Blue Eddy AC70. This one's very compact, very portable, but don't let the small size fool you. This guy is very powerful, especially considering its size. In fact, this one is rated for, you can see, 1000 watts. Now, a lot of power stations, when they brag about how much they can support, when you start pushing them to the extremes, they don't often always deliver what they're supposed to. And so I just want to demonstrate today because I've tested a lot of different power stations and I've tested a lot of Blue Eddy power stations. And what I found to be true with Blue Eddy is that typically they're going to over deliver. They're basically going to under promise and over deliver. And so check this out. I've got it connected right now to a very powerful backpack vacuum. And oftentimes when I try this backpack vacuum on smaller power stations, what will happen is the station won't be able to start the vacuum at all. Or if it does start it, it'll start for a few seconds and then shut off. So let's see what happens here on the AC70. Let's go ahead and turn the vacuum on. And we're going to see some surge watts here. But check that out. We are north of 1000 watts not just a little bit i mean we're a good 60 70 watts over and it's able to deliver power to the vacuum continuously i think this is really impressive and it says a lot about blue eddy because like i said i've tested a lot of power stations and i've found this to be the case with blue eddy that they typically do under promise and over deliver you know, it's rated for 1000 watts and it's delivering over a thousand watts. No problems. It's not hesitating. The vacuum's got full suction. And so, like I said, don't let the small size of this AC70 fool you. I mean, it is a very powerful power station and I think it's really suited well for this application here because it doesn't take up a lot of space here in the cargo area. And yet we're getting over a thousand watts i mean look at that it's still going strong there you know we are well past the the surge watts you know most power stations will have you know surge watts in excess of what they're rated for you know maybe 20 30 40 seconds but we are well past that now and it's still running the vacuum so really impressive here but what about charging it back up well now that it's discharged i've hopped back in the jeep of course the engine is running naturally 
And let me show you how it works. It's really simple. I didn't have to press any buttons or anything. Basically, when the engine starts up, the Charger 1 detects the engine is running, but the alternator on the Jeep is running, and then it simply starts charging the connected power station. So the AC70 is charging because the engine is running. And notice the charging wattage right there, 400 and 40 watts and as I've been testing it over the last week it has consistently been above 400 watts typically right at 440 watts and that's what makes the Charger 1 such a game changer you know every time the Jeep is running every time your engine is running it's going to be charging whatever power station or whatever lithium battery that you've got connected to it and like I said, I've been testing it for over a week now. It hasn't put in you know, excessive strain on the, the vehicle or the alternator for that matter. You know, it just works. I haven't had to go in there and mess with any settings. It always is charging the, the power station. And so that way you can rapidly recharge whatever power station you've got connected to it. And so it basically gives your car a modern electrical system, a modern hybrid electrical system, more or less. I mean, I could connect the, the Blue Eddy AC200L and have the same 2.4 kilowatts that you get with Ford's, you know, power boost setup or the Toyota 2.4 turbocharged, you know, iForce Max setup. And so it's really neat that you can do that on an older vehicle that lacks that functionality from the, the factory. So guys, I'm really excited about the Blue Eddy Charger 1. And like I mentioned before, you're not restricted to just the Blue Eddy ecosphere. And you know, their main competitor has a similar device, but with the competitor's device, you can only use the competitor's product with their DC to DC charger. And so I really like that Blue Eddy opened it up to basically any lithium battery. I really think it makes the Blue Eddy Charger 1 a better value. It's more universal. It's going to work with the majority of, of power stations out there. And I also think it's priced right. Well, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I want to say a special thanks to Blue Eddy for providing the Charger 1 and the AC70 power station for this video. If you're interested in purchasing those items or any other Blue Eddy power stations or products, I will include affiliate links down below in the description and in the comments. So I appreciate you using those to help support the channel. If you got any questions, definitely drop me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.